So we're here at the example table, and in this video we're going to be talking about the root test. Let's motivate this by looking first at a geometric series. So if we have a plus a times r plus a times r squared plus a times r cubed and so on, well, we can let a sub n be equal to a times r to the n, and then the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of the absolute value of a sub n is the limit as n goes to infinity. Well, the absolute value of this thing just ignores uh, any sign that r might have. Well, let's assume that a is positive for the moment. And we take the nth root of this, we get the nth root of a times the nth root of r to the n, and the nth root of r to the n is just r. So we get the nth root of the absolute value of a times the absolute value of r. The limit as n goes to infinity of this expression is 1, so this is just the absolute value of r. And we already know that the absolute value of r is all we need to know about this series to determine whether or not it converges. If this thing is less than 1, then it converges. If it's greater than or equal to 1, it diverges. So this is actually justification for the root test. Now we're not proving it formally, but this is the idea. So the root test, let's suppose that the limit as n approaches infinity, nth root of the absolute value of a sub n equals l. So this thing uh, converges to some value l or it equals infinity. We allow this um, this limit to be infinity. If L is less than 1, then the series, sum from n equals 0 to infinity, a sub n, converges absolutely. And if L is greater than 1, then the same series diverges. So see the parallel with the, uh, the ratio r in, an, in a um, geometric series. If it's less than 1, then we have convergence. If it's greater than 1, we have divergence. Now one thing we lose is that we can't say that it diverges uh, when L is equal to 1. If r is equal to 1, or the absolute value of r is equal to 1, we know that a geometric series diverges. The root test is inconclusive when l equals 1. Let's take a look at an example. So does the sum from n equals, let's say, 2 to infinity n squared plus n plus 1 over 3n squared minus 2 to the n converge. Well, the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth root of the absolute value of a sub n, in this case, well, all of these terms are positive for all the values of n that we care about. And when we take, so the absolute value doesn't play a role. So when we take the nth root, this n just disappears. So this is the limit as n approaches infinity of n squared plus n plus 1 over 3n squared minus 2. This is a ratio of polynomials. They have the same uh, degree in the leading terms here. So we, took, so we uh, take the limit by taking the ratio of the leading coefficients. So this is 1 third less than, oh, not less than L, less than 1. So by the root test, this series converges. Now the root test, remember, gives us absolute convergence, but of course if this series converges, it must converge absolutely because all of the terms are positive. Let's look at another example. So does the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 2 to the n over n converge. 
Well, if we look at the limit as n approaches infinity, nth root of the absolute value of these guys. Now, when we take the absolute value, it just gets rid of this negative. So we get 2 to the n over n. This is the limit as n approaches infinity of 2 over the nth root of n. The nth root of n as n goes to infinity goes to 1. So this is 2, which is greater than 1. So by the root test, this series diverges. Now, you could also look at these terms and say that they're not going to zero, so this series must diverge by the divergence test. So there's very often more than one way to prove whether a series converges or diverges. Let's look at one more example. So does the sum from n equals 1 to infinity n over 2n plus 1? converge. Well, the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth root of n over 2n plus 1 is the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth root of n over the nth root of 2n plus 1. And you should be able to prove that both the numerator and the denominator uh, go to 1 as n goes to infinity. So this is 1. So the root test is inconclusive. But this is another case where you could use the test for divergence. These terms uh, have a limit of 1 half. For very large values of n, this 1 doesn't matter. So this is mostly, this is um, just about 1 half. So even when the root test is inconclusive, you might have another test that can do the job.